Hi everyone, it's Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros and today it's time for another iron review because you guys seem to be loving them. So today we're going to review these. It's the Callaway Apex Deep Cavity Back or DCB irons. Let's get down to the fitting bay, give them a hit and see how good they really are. Okay, so I've just got down into the fitting bay and before I start the review by telling you how this club looks and feels, I just want to say a big thank you to Antti, who's one of the subscribers from Finland who commented on one of my other videos and asked me to do a review of these irons for him. So Antti, this video is dedicated to you. Please let me know if you've watched it and what you think to it. And if anyone else is watching down the lens and would like to see me review any other equipment, as long as it's in the left-handed version, I can get my hands on it, I'll absolutely do a review for you guys down the lens. So first impression. So what I would say is there are three Apex irons in the Callaway range. There's the Apex Pro iron, which ha uh, Callaway themselves say is targeting a plus five to a five handicapper. There's then the standard Apex irons, which Callaway again say are targeting a scratch golfer to a 10 handicapper. And then there's these, the Apex Deep Cavity Back or DCB, which are targeting a 10 handicapper plus. So they're right in that game improvement category. And just to go straight on to how they look, they look like a typical game improvement iron. One of these modern game improvement irons that's slightly chunky in terms of the sole itself. It looks again like, um, like a real high bounce wedge, one of those kind of wedges that you see advertised on kind of infomercial channels with a really big, thick, bouncy kind of chunky sole. It's got that to it and it's got that chunky top line that you're used to seeing. So again, I'll zoom in and show you that, but that chunky top line. But yeah, th those two things are things that I didn't like when I started these reviews based on what my current irons look like. And all of a sudden I've realized they really inspire confidence when actually I've got a club that's got those two features onto it and it's made me fall in love with a lot of these game improvement irons. So really excited to see if this one does exactly the same as the others. Now, one final interesting thing, I did recently test the Callaway uh, Rogue Max ST irons, which I'll put a link in the top corner for you if you've not seen that one and want to go and check it out, then please do. But in that review, I was surprised that I saw that the bottom groove of the iron was actually colored in a white paint. And someone commented on the video and said that's quite common for Callaway to do that, and actually goes back as far as some of the X-Series irons. Now, I hadn't seen it before because I hadn't hit a lot of irons other than the ones that I've been fitted for. Um, so yeah, it was something I really liked. This one doesn't have that, so it is just a standard iron, similar to my Titleist one, where all the grooves are just the same metallic finish. Um, but yeah, nothing that offends me. I did like it in the other Callaway iron, but I'm not bothered that it's not there either way. Otherwise though, really good looking golf club, really keen to see how it feels and how it sounds when we give it a hit. So let's give it a go. First shot with the iron, let's see how it sounds and how it feels and hopefully get some good numbers. Sounded quite chunky. I think I call it a hair thin. Interesting to see how the numbers perform. It wasn't the best strike in the world. 148 yards, okay, so on the bottom end of my carry um, with a seven iron with my own irons, but it wasn't the cleanest strike. So first up, but it sounded quite solid, something I've not felt in some of the other game improvement irons that feel really soft off the face or actually the face feels quite springy. That felt quite solid. Now that might be just because I thinned it a little bit and got a little bit more of that weight. Let's hit a few more. Unfortunately, I've just closed that down and absolutely turned it over. It's a massive pull hook. 156 yards, really good. That actually felt good. Land angle, 41.6. So anyone who's watched any of the reviews I've done on this channel, I normally struggle with land angle with my irons. So when I see a land angle that's starting to go north of 40, getting closer to 45, something that really impresses me. So for me to have an iron that I've pulled, drawed, and landing at 40, uh, 42 degrees is, is really good. Yeah, much better strike there. It's gone quite high again, really like that about it. It does feel quite solid. Something that, again, I'm not used to feeling. It's got 149 yards, spinning at 6,000, which is good, really good. Landing at 44 degrees, really good. Club head speed, the same, carry 149. That's a much more solid strike. Definitely felt more solid off the face, which is good. I could feel that. Doesn't look like it's gone as high. Let's see, I launched at 17 degrees. It's, the carry's now jumped up 156.9 yards, spinning at 4.7. So initial observations from the first four or five shots are launching in a really good window, a window that I like. Land angle is very similar to my Titleist T200. Carry number is really good. I've just hit that one 156.9, which is the, the furthest of all the batch of shots. 
Spin number is a little bit lower though. That one was 4776, which is a little bit lower than what I've been getting with my own irons in the batch of shots I'm hitting tonight. So far, feels very, very comparable to my current iron, albeit it's got that slightly more game improvement feel. But let's hit a few more. That has gone really high. Super high, super soft landing. The best shot I think I've hit out of the bunch so far. It'll be interesting to see what the carry number is. Really like that one. So that one's 148. So that one has popped up really high. Land angle at 44 degrees, 6,336 on the spin. So wow, big climb in spin, which is probably why it jumped up so high in the air. Carry number only 147.5 though. So again, but really, really consistent in terms of carry number. Interesting though, that the spin has jumped up with that better hit. So seeing some real variances in spin hitting these at the moment. That one's a much, I've pulled it a little bit. It's a much better strike in terms of ball flight, height. Yeah, that one's gone far again. 159.5 on the carry there. Spinning at 5,300. Launching at 17. Landing at 43.7. Now that's the numbers I want to get out of this. There's a couple of shots I've hit that have been really good strikes and have got up there. So I guess the question for me at the moment is, with this club, is it a case that maybe it's just not as forgiving? as some of the other super game improvement irons that I've tested. And it's actually much more in that ballpark of my own Titleist T200, where there's that balance between ultimate forgiveness and player feel. Uh, and maybe it's just that my strike is just not good enough today to maximize consistently what this club is capable of. But we'll hit a few more and see what we think. Again, my strike probably dictating that there. Bit of a pull again but 159.5 again, spin rate down 4655, launching at 15.9, land angle at 40. Just a little baby draw that one, much better strike, just gone right to target. Wow, 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 probably because I've hit a bit of a draw, 163 yards, longest shot of the day, spinning at 5,100, launching at 16.7, land angle 43.1. That's good. That's really good. So what we're actually starting to see here is that this club has got the capability to outperform my current iron and I can get out more than what I'm putting in with my, or get out more with this club than what I'm getting out of my current iron. The challenge is it probably just doesn't feel like it's giving me as much forgiveness. So it's all on me. If I'm not playing my best, which I'm not striking at my best today, this club does let me know that. That has gone really high. Again, bit of a pull draw, but absolutely flown up in the air. 164.6, it's getting longer this golf club. The more I hit, the more I get comfortable with it, the more it's getting longer. And instantly my opinion starts to change. Okay, I've now got five shots that are longer than anything I hit with my own current, current iron. The spin on that one, 5357 is really good. The land angle, 46.2 is really good. Okay. Maybe the issue's me here. Maybe I'm just not consistent enough on my off day to be good enough to hit this iron as well as it needs to be hit. But I like it, I do like it. It's just not some of the other reviews. So if you've watched my uh, review of the Ping irons, the Ping G425, I'll put a link up there below, above, or maybe even my review of the TaylorMade Stealth irons. They absolutely blew me away. Um, really, really loved the clubs. Was wowed by them as I was hitting them. Probably not as wowed by this as I'm here. I'm not just seeing performance that's like, oh my God, I need to buy these irons. I think though it's really comparable to my current T200, albeit it looks a little bit chunkier. It's really comparable. It looks at like the top end of what it's capable of is more than my current iron. But in terms of forgiveness, probably very, very similar. And you'll see that in the data at the end, some of the inconsistencies. Last shot. Caught that really thin, but it's still launched really well, which is good. That was a bit more forgiving because I wasn't expecting that launch off of that strike. Expecting the carry to drop quite a lot. 153.8, not a lot. So that is still a really, really, really good carry number for a shot that I hit quite thin. Landing at 41.5, span a little bit more because it was that thin shot of 5.857. Yeah, that was quite good. Okay, so I'm done hitting the iron now and I'm gonna go home I'm gonna look at the data in a little bit more detail. I'll also compare it to a batch of shots I hit with my Titleist T200, so you can see what I was delivering on the day of my current iron to see how this one performs. My current view as I'm in the bay is really, really good iron. I personally find it quite solid off the face, which is something 
I'm not as keen on as a softer face, but absolutely be lots of you down the lens that like that kind of solid feel. Again, not sure if that's due to the forged nature of the iron. In terms of how it performs, the top end of what it's capable of and what I've been able to get out of it, really, really good. Some numbers that really impress me considering it's an equal loft to the current iron that I'm gaming. Really, really like the top end performance. What I am finding though, compared to some of the other game improvement irons that I've hit, there is a little bit more inconsistency. So it's maybe not as forgiving as some of those irons. However, that being said, I know for a fact that I'm not hitting the golf ball as well at the moment as when I've filmed some of those other reviews. So it might be that that's all down to me and actually this iron is still performing really well. Let's go home, let's check out the data, compare it to the other batch of shots, and then we'll give our concluding thoughts and see if I'm still feeling the same when I've compared the feels that I've had in the bay to the real data when I get home. So just got home and looking at the data side by side now, at the top you'll see a batch of shots that I hit before I filmed the review with my Titleist T200 and then at the bottom the shots that you've just seen me hit with the Apex DCB. Now this is exactly why you should compare the feels that you had in the bay to the real data because actually the real data is really promising overall. You'll see that I was swinging the club a couple of mile an hour faster at 80.6 and that probably is the reason why we're seeing somewhere in the region of a sort of three to four yard of extra carry distance because each mile an hour is roughly about two yards of carry. However, smash factor really consistent with my Titleist T200. The spin on average is up and that is a real promising thing there. Launch angle really really similar. Peak height's a little bit higher so roughly what four and a half feet higher and that land angle something I really care about was 1.3 degrees higher but I think overall a really really good consistent club that performs really really similar to my Titleist T200 which is exactly what I was feeling when I was in the bay. The one thing that did worry me in the bay was some of the jumping around of the spin number that I was seeing and you can see that in the data here. The standard deviation so the consistency of my Titleist T200 188 revs difference between the batch of shots I hit. Now it was a smaller batch of shots, but there was a 569 revs per minute deviation with the Apex DCB. If I just show you all of the shots I hit here and we just focus on that spin, you'll see particularly in those five first five or six shots, there's some massive jumps between sort of 4,700 right at the bottom end and 6,336 at the top end. Um, and that does worry me a little bit that it was jumping around a little bit like I have said in the video though, I wasn't striking at my best on the day and that probably needs to be factored in. But if you're a mid handicap golfer, someone like me or even a higher handicap golfer who probably isn't gonna hit it that consistently, it might be something for you to consider if you go and get tested for these, if you get some consistent spin numbers or not. Always like to show you the strike location between the two batch of shots so you can see how comparable they are. You can see here the Apex DCB on the left hand side, my Titleist T200 on the right, both really consistent in terms of where I was hitting it on the day and comparable slightly out the toe. One thing I just want to show you as always is again is the dispersion of my shots. Again I did touch on it wasn't my best day in the bay when I was striking these so you'll see I was a little bit all over the place hitting quite a lot of pulls um, but yeah what you can see there is a reflection of probably how I was feeling and that does need to be taken into consideration when you're watching this review but I do think that is a fair reflection of a mid handicap golfer. We're not always going to be striping it down the middle and we do need an iron that offers us lots of forgiveness on our off day. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the video now and my overall conclusion on these irons are they're an absolutely brilliant iron, probably not as forgiving as some of the super game improvement irons that I've tested recently, but a really good iron and definitely one that I would test if I was probably in that sort of 10 to 20 handicap bracket, and especially if I like Callaway irons and I've played them before. Now all that remains for me to say is if you like the video then please do consider giving it a thumbs up, please do consider subscribing to the channel and please do comment down below if there's any other equipment that you'd like to see me review. As you've seen from this video I do listen to what the subscribers are saying and try and create reviews that you guys want to watch. Thanks very much for watching, goodbye.